Hey there, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. I'm your host, Pat Schloss. In the last episode, we used interjoin and antijoin to get the species name for each of the genomes in our RNDB dataset. We did this by joining our metadata file with a mapping file from the NCBI that linked the subspecies taxonomic ID with the species ID. We then used another file from the RNDB to link the ID to a name. All this information will be useful to us as we try to see how many amplicon sequence variants, also called ASVs, can represent a single species and how many ASVs are found across multiple species. That information will be critical as we try to evaluate the claim that ASVs contain species level information. But I'm concerned also that we might find the ASVs in multiple genera, families, and even possibly lower level taxonomic groupings. To determine the specificity of ASVs at each taxonomic level or rank, we'll need to collect the data for those lower level taxonomic groupings. In our metadata file, we have a column called RDP, which contains the output of classifying each of the 16S RNA gene sequences against the Ribosomal Database Project, or RDP, database. For each genome, the data in that column contains the name for each taxonomic rank, along with its rank, the name of a rank, like phylum, class, genus, separated by a semicolon. The name of the rank and the actual rank are separated by vertical lines, also called pipes. What we need is to take the strings in the RDP column and separate them by the semicolons to separate the data for each rank. We also need to separate the data for each rank by the pipe character so that we know which rank each name belongs to. So this is what we're going to do in today's episode. We'll learn a new function called separate, which will allow us to separate the strings in the RDP column by semicolons, and by pipes to create new columns in our metadata file. Along the way, though, we'll see that the data aren't formatted as nicely as we might like, and we'll need to use the pivot longer function we learned in an earlier episode, as well as its com complement, pivot wider. Ideally, I'd only cover one big function per episode, but it's also important to show how these functions fit together. Besides, I think you can do it. You're big kids. Even if you're only watching this video to learn more about R, and don't know what a 16S rRNA gene is, I'm sure you'll get a lot out of today's episode. Please take the time to follow along on your own computer. If you haven't been following along but would like to, welcome. Please check out the blog post that accompanies this video where you'll find instructions on catching up, reference notes, and links to supplemental material. The link to the blog post for today's video is below in the notes. Let's go ahead and see if we can split apart that RDP column into our different taxonomic levels. I'm at my home directory. Again, I can use my alias to come to my project root directory. I see I'm on the master branch. Uh, I'm gonna come over and I filed a couple of issues here in GitHub. Uh, the first is for today. So splitting apart, uh, this one here, issue 25, splitting apart the RTP column into different columns for each genome. I also made one that we'll tackle on the next episode for tracing back the NCBI taxonomy. So I figured, We've got the RDP, we've got the NCBI information. Let's see if we can't also trace back the NCBI taxonomy, but we'll save that for the next episode. So coming into today's issue of separating the RDP sequence classification into different columns for each genome, uh, we see that we're gonna modify the getgenomeidtaxonomy.r script that we wrote last time to split the RDP column from um, that, the data references genome ID taxonomy, that TSV, into separate columns indicating the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus for each genome. And then we're gonna rename the output to be genome ID underscore RDP dot underscore taxonomy. And I'm wanting to do this because I know that in the next episode I'll do NCBI. And so that I'll output as NCBI taxonomy dot TSV. And then I wanna make sure that we update our make file. So again, this is issue 25. I'm gonna go ahead and create that issue branch. So get uh, branch issue 25, get checkout um, issue 2025. Good, I'll go ahead and open up my project uh, in our studio. Here we are, let me double check. Here we are, let me double check our working directory, get WD and we're in the right place. Okay, I'm gonna Go ahead and open up my get genome ID taxonomy file. And um, you see this here on the left side of my window. 
uh, to get going, I'm going to go ahead and run some of these earlier steps that we uh, we did um, from metadata down through um, test and testing. And we come through, and everything works well. If test had been false, this would have failed. Uh, Let's see what happens. If I do test if not false, it says error, false is not true, right? So it would have said error, true is not, or test is not true, and it would have stopped the script there. But it did, and so we're in good shape. All right, so this is where we're going to be looking at this chunk of code. For now, I'm going to go ahead and take this part where we write it out to the file, and I'm going to bump it down a few rows to get it out of the way. and I'm going to run this chunk of code. And what we get uh, is this tibble. And you'll recall that the first several hundred lines of the, of the tibble um, start with genome IDs RNDB, V3, and then a number. And these were made, in, these were, uh, the data we're getting is coming from a database that isn't so interested in the sequences, but in the number of copies of the 16S gene in a genome, the RN operon that has the 16S, 23S, and 5S genes. Um, and so because these were determined experimentally, empirically, they didn't get a sequence, and so they didn't run it through the RDP. There's not a classification. Um, and so these aren't really that interesting to me. So to get rid of these, and so I, I can see the RDP column for you know, something that actually has data. I'm gonna go ahead and use filter. And I'm gonna filter out things. I'll use is.na on RDP. And so if I run this, I'm gonna get all of the 205 rows that have RDP as NA. Now, I don't want those. I want where is NA RDP is true, right? And so filter keeps things that are true. So if I put an exclamation point be before the command, it's going to flip the logical argument. So things that are false will become true. True will be false. And so filter will keep things that are true. And we can go ahead and run this and see that we then get back uh, 15,571 genomes and we have their RDP taxonomy. So good, that's not a big deal, um, but helps to clean up the output a little bit. So. Um, the next thing that we want to do is to separate out this RDP column. Now, because this is going to get pretty messy pretty quickly down here, um, we already have um, as much information um, width-wise that um, our studio will let us handle. For the time being, I'm going to go ahead and remove the species and scientific name, again, only for um, testing purposes. So I'll do select. Um, and I'll do minus species, minus scientific name. Now, don't let me forget to remove this line uh, in the future. And so again, we see that we've got genome ID and RDP. Great. So the command that I want to really focus on today is called separate. So separate allows us to take data coming through our pipeline and tell it, what column we want to separate. So we'll do call equals RDP, and then into which columns we want to export it into, that we want to separate it into. And so this becomes a vector, and we can give it names of those new columns. And so I'm going to say kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus. And this is kind of running off the screen, so I'm going to put in a line break to make it easier to read. And then um, let's run it like this and see what happens. And so we get some warning messages that we'll talk about here in a minute. But separate tries to be really smart and really help us out. And what it's doing is it's looking for a common element across the string that it can use to separate things. And you recall in my introductory comments, I commented that we're going to separate by the semicolon to split apart this initial chunk from this chunk and this chunk and this chunk.
But what it's done, because we didn't tell it what to, tell it what to separate on here, it's separated by the pipe as well as the semicolon, okay? So we wanna be explicit about what we wanna separate on. And at this point, what I'd like to do is to sep on the semicolon. And if we run that, um, what we're seeing, uh, we're getting there, right? Uh, so it's split into the different taxonomic levels. That looks good. But what you'll notice is at the beginning, there's a space. And so the separator we actually wanted to use is semicolon space. We run that. And now what we get are kind of the nicely, fairly nicely formatted um, names, and it's split it by the taxonomic level, taxonomic ranking. Now, if we look at these warning messages, we see two types. So the first says expected six pieces, additional pieces discarded in 1,693 rows. Okay, so that would mean that there were more than six levels for about 1,700 sequences. Um, in the second warning, it says expected six pieces, missing pieces filled with NA in 685 rows. So that would mean that some of the sequences, some of the genomes, didn't have taxonomic information um, all the way up to the genus level, or perhaps it's missing one of the middle levels. So let's explore this a little bit further and see if we can clean it up. One idea that we might think about would be to say, well, what if we, um, you know, if we're missing levels, perhaps we could say, well, if you have a phylum level, but not a, a class level, well, we could look for phylum and then add uh, a class that's like NA or an unclassified class. Um, let's look at this a little bit further and see what's going on. One of the commands that we can use to look at a specific line in our data frame is slice. So we can slice uh, four, and that was the first one that tells us that there were additional pieces. So we'll go ahead and do slice four. And what we get out here is phylum class order family genus. So those are discarded. So maybe we wanna look up a level. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, move our slice up higher before we do the separate, right? And so what we get here is this, uh, but maybe what we'd like to do is get the whole thing. And so to get the whole thing, we can actually then do a uh, pull RDP, and that will return the RT RDP column as its own vector. And so this is what's contained in uh, this cell of the data frame. And so we have bacterial domain, actinobacteria phylum, actinobacteria class, actinobacteriaidae, subclass. Ah, so we've got a subclass and a suborder. So that's interesting. Um, so we've got more than kind of the traditional Linnaean taxonomy. And so it appears that we might have these two extra levels going out to the eighth level. Okay. So that's something to be aware of. One thing we might do is if we knew things like uh, STR replace, we could um, search for this pattern and remove things that have suborders or subclasses to force everything to be six columns. Okay, so that was one of the errors we were getting. And so that clarifies that a bit that we had additional pieces because uh, we have these suborders and subclasses. What about these ones that were missing pieces that were filled in with NAs? So let's look at say 65. And what this shows us is that in this sequence, we have the domain, the kingdom, phylum, class, but no order. Uh, and we have a family and a genus. Uh, let's look at another. Uh, let's, just because my eyes went there, let's go to 231, run that. And it's again, very similar. It's the same type, same type of thing. Um, let's do 108. And so this is has kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, but no genus. Um, and so this this is giving me a little bit of the willies because we know the genus name of this organism because it's got a genome sequence, right? So if it's got a species name, it's no doubt got a genus name. And so that that's missing, eh, 
maybe it makes me a little bit reluctant to use the RDP. So anyway, so we've got two problems. We've got the problem that we have extra levels, taxonomic levels of these suborders and some classes. We don't necessarily know which sequence has each. We could search through all of our RD, through that RDP column, find the rows that contain suborder or subclass, and then remove that. We also have cases where we're missing levels in the middle. So like we're missing, I forget what it was even now, we're missing the, uh, the order level for this cyanobacteria. Um, but we're also missing things at the end. And I suspect that there are uh, genome sequences from like candidate phyla or yeah, where we, we just don't have much information kind of further down, right? Um, so this might be fairly common. And as we saw from our error message up here, that we seem to have these the suborder subclass problem in about 1700 sequences, and that we're missing information in about 700. So instead of going through the process of um, using string replace to remove or to add in different taxonomic levels, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, split this apart, split apart like we did, um, maybe give it more generic column headers, and then we're going to use pivot longer to take those, those columns and concatenate them on to the end of each other. So let's give that a shot. So instead of these named levels, I'm going to go ahead and put in eight levels because I think I think <laughs> uh, those are the only levels that we that we have. So let me go ahead and remove these. And what I'm going to do is call it RDP underscore A. And why I use that RDP underscore, I'll explain uh, in a bit. C, D, E, F. So that's three, six. So we need two more. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. That's eight levels that should cover everything. So again, it says expected eight pieces, additional pieces discarded in 199 rows. So maybe we'll look at these one more time to figure out what's going on there. And then expected eight pieces, missing pieces filled in. So those would be things that only had six levels, right? So we see a lot more there. Let's look at 796, kind of like we did above here. And see what's going on there. Whoa, this looks huge. So we have bacteria, phylum, class, order, family, genus. Ah, but then we have three vertical pipes and then we have the same thing again. So what I think is happening here, and I'm cheating a little bit because uh, I did some research, is that what they did was they took the 16S sequences from these genomes. And so if this sequence had multiple 16S genes, they classify them. And if they get different classifications for the different um, uh, operons, then they reported them together separated by that vertical pipe. Um, and so you'll see that one classified down to Pectobacterium and one only went to Enterobacteriaceae. Um, and so that's 199 of the 15,000 some uh, genomes have this problem. For now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to change that RDP column and make it um, an NA domain. Um, and, and what we'll probably end up doing is just kind of throwing away, um, yeah, I don't know what we'll do. For now, for this episode, what I'm gonna do is throw it away I'll think about it and maybe we'll come back and deal with it in a, in a future episode. So let's see. So let's go ahead and say, um, we're gonna filter and uh, filter where we can do a string detect. So str detect, we give it a string. So it's gonna be RDP. And the pattern that we wanna find is uh, the three vertical lines, but that vertical line means a special thing in a pattern, it actually means or. So to match the actual vertical lines, we're going to um, use those double backslashes. And if we run that, we then get back the 100 and, 
guess there's 208. Uh, so maybe, um, yeah, so there must have been a few that had that triple back, but that when you looked at the total number uh, of columns that were generated by separate was still under eight. So there's 208 genomes in here that um, have kind of a nebulous classification. And again, it seems weird that you would classify it, classify the sequences back to the RDP when they're sequenced genomes, we should know what they are. Um, so I'm going to think about what we'll do for this in a, for a future episode. But knowing that the next episode we're going to do with the, R, the um, NCBI taxonomy, that might be the route we take. Anyway, um, these are the things you learn as you start digging through your data. So again, we don't want to string detect. So again, we can use that exclamation point to not match string detect, uh, to not match this pattern, and pipe that into separate. And this should work, and we should no longer have that message that we have too many columns. So it tells us that it, it filled in missing pieces with NA in those 14,078 rows. Excellent. Now, um, what we have at this point, as you see, is that we have the genome ID, the RDP columns out to H um, for all of our samples. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pivot longer And the columns we want, so calls equals, and what I'm gonna use is a special function called starts with. So I could write out RDP A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, but instead what I'm gonna do is starts with, and I'll say RDP underscore. So I want to get those columns that start with RDP underscore, and I'm going to then say uh, names two, and I'm gonna call that rank and values to, I'm gonna say um, a name. And so if we run this, we again get this uh, complaint that missing pieces filled with NA. Um, what we can do um, before I, well, let me tell you what we see in Pivot Longer, is that we now have, instead of a nine column data frame, we now have a three column data frame. We have the genome ID, we have the rank, and we have the name. So we're winning, right? So I, I hate warning messages. <laughs> and so we can add another argument to separate, and that is to use fill and then write, the value write. Uh, and what that will do is that will automatically put NA values on the right, in the columns on the right, if it needs to add information. And if we run that, we see that our warning message goes away. Um, we also now see that we have uh, these NA values and what we can do is remove those NA values with filter uh, name um, uh, is, sorry, not is dot NA uh, name. And so again, that will get rid of these values where the name was NA. Um, and I'm just kind of thinking, um, yeah, that, that should work well. And now when we run this, we see that our data frame has removed those rows from the data frame where the name was NA. What we'd now like to do is get a column where we have the taxonomic name as well as the taxonomic level. Can you think what we might do here? Yeah, we're gonna use separate again, okay? So we'll say separate, and here we're gonna do separate name and we're going to do it into, and we'll say um, taxon name, and we're going to do taxon rank. Okay. And I didn't give it a delimiter to separate things on. Um, and I'm seeing that it's kind of complaining about things. And I think that's because there were extra delimiters that we saw here. Um, so I think it's maybe trying to, to separate like proteobacteria on that backslash or on those quotes. So I'll go ahead and give it the sep and we're gonna separate on the vertical pipe. And that works great, right? I see a misspelled taxon rank um, there. 
And I also have this rank column, which I don't need. So I'm going to do a select minus rank and then pipe that. And great, we have our genome ID, our taxon name, our taxon rank. So I don't really like these quotes <laughs> in the names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an str uh, mutate. So mutate changes columns, you remember. Taxon name. And I'll mutate that to be str replace all. And what we're going to match are um, in taxon name. Uh, we're going to uh, pattern. I'm going to say, um, I always forget what to do with back with uh, escape characters. So I, I think we can do backslash double quote and then replacement equals uh, a pair of quotes. And so I'm using single quotes here to wrap the double quotes and, and we'll see if this works. Whoa, um, replacement is missing with no default. Um, Ah, I put the parentheses, an extra closing parentheses. Ah, something weird happened. Let me go ahead and escape out. If you get that plus sign in RStudio, hit the escape key and you'll get back to a good prompt. I'll go ahead and rerun this. So for some reason, ah, I see what the problem is. I'm missing a uh, closing parentheses. Okay. So that should work. And again, I've got this plus sign, so I hit escape to get out. Come back up here rerun that and great that actually worked I didn't have to worry about all the crazy escape characters and so you'll see that like uh, the phylum level names no longer have those double quotes on them um, maybe another thing I'll do um, is add another uh, taxon name another m modification of taxon name uh, I don't really like having these spaces in the taxon names so what I'm going to do is str replace all. So str replace replaces one instance of that. So it would have only removed like the opening quote mark. Um, str replace all removes all occurrences. So I'm going to do taxon name pattern equals uh, a space. And I'm going to replace that with an underscore. And if we run that, then our Baciliaceae one should have an underscore and it does so that's great okay so now we've got our genome id our taxon name and our taxon rank what i want though are these taxon ranks to be the columns and the taxon names to be the values but before i do that i'll recall that we have a bunch of um or not a bunch but a couple uh sub levels so i'll pipe that out to count and i'm going to count the number of times that each taxon rank occurs. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and, this is just annoying me every time it goes down there. Uh, and so we see class, domain, family, genus, order, phylum, subclass, suborder, right? So um, I wanna get rid of these values before I um, convert those names to column headings. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another filter and I can do, um, taxon rank in, and I think we've seen this in a previous episode, in a vector of names that I want to keep. So I will keep uh, um, domain, um, phylum, class, order, family, genus. And now at the end of running that, if I do count taxon rank, I should only see these six levels. And sure enough, we only have those six levels now. So we've got things in good shape. All right. So we've got our, our, our data frame here. Um, I guess commenting that out didn't stop it from jumping ahead. Whatever. I'm sure there's some setting I can change so that when I run a code chunk, it stays there, but that's okay. Um, and so what we want to do anyway, back to, back to this is we then want to make the column headings, the values from the taxon rank column and the values, 
the, the, the tax on name values. So we've seen pivot longer up here. The complement of pivot longer is pivot wider. Okay, And so the ID, the, we can give the columns that we want to pivot longer. Um, and, and the key here is that we want to give it um, columns that will allow it to know what's unique. Or um, another way to say it would be that we, um, we want it to know what rows to clump together as we pivot longer. Okay, but if we give it names from, so what column to take the names from and what columns to take the values from, then it will use everything else as kind of that uh, unique key for clumping together the different rows. So our names from is gonna, so that's the name of the columns. So that's gonna be taxon rank and our values from will be taxon name. So when we run this, we should then get a genome ID column, a column for domain, uh, phylum, class, order, family, genus. Uh, it's not gonna be in that order, it's gonna be an alphabetical order, but, but that's fine. So we'll see if this works. I am feeling good. Domain, phylum, class, order, family, genus, winning. So it did, it did put it in the right order, that's good. So I suspect it's using, um, yeah, I'm not sure why it got that right. <laughs> But hey, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, so that's good. We've got the genome ID, the domain, phylum, class, order, family, genus. One last thing I want to do. Uh, you'll see that people use domain or kingdom. I prefer kingdom, or that's just I don't know that I prefer. That's just what I always use. So I'll do rename. So I'll rename kingdom equals domain, and this will change the column heading for domain to be kingdom. Okay, great. Now remember, we kind of hid a bunch of information way up here and you were supposed to remind me to put it back in. Um, and where did I do that? So that was right here, the select command. So I'm gonna comment that out and we wanna make sure that everything works with all the data. And no error messages. We see the genome ID, the species, scientific name, and then the kingdom phylum class order family genus. Wonderful. Now, we can finish this all off by outputting this, and we're gonna change this to be genome ID underscore RDP underscore taxonomy. Okay. So the, the thing that still has me a little bit worried about all this is how we, we removed um, those lines and really those genome sequences that have that uh, triple vertical bar. And what, what I'm doing here is I'm really removing all the information. I'm also removing the, the genome ID for that. And these actually might be samples that are genome sequences that kind of prove the point that ASVs aren't all they're cracked up to be because these are gonna be cases where we have 16S sequences that don't classify the same way at like the genus level. And if they don't classify the same way at the genus level, well, um, then perhaps they're not unique to a specific genus. Uh, and that's something that, that we'd want to keep. Um, so instead of removing those, for right now, I'm going to change this to be a mutate. Um, and what we can do, as we saw previously, so we'll mutate RDP, RDP equals str replace, and we're gonna do it on the RDP. And the pattern is gonna be those three lines, but I'm gonna do a period star um, and then period star. So I'm gonna match everything that's on that row for the RDP. And I'm going to replace uh, with, um, I'll do NA vertical line, um, what, uh, domain, okay? So this at least will keep the genome sequence in our data set. If I run this, um, that all goes. Uh, let me come back down here and do a count on kingdom and run that. We see that we've got um, 
NA208 bacteria 15307. If I do it on phylum, uh, let me go ahead and print all the rows. So we can do print N equals inf. So this will print out all the rows from our data frame. We see that we have an NA here of 225. Um, and so that's good. Uh, one thing I'm noticing though, is that the NA here is red, which tells me uh, that it's actually being used as an NA value rather than the string NA. Um, and so if you recall back here um, from count kingdom, that the NA was black. And so the black NA tells you that it's being treated as a string or as a character rather than as an actual NA value. What we can do um, in separate is that sometimes you might imagine that you've got a situation like this where we had say a number, vertical bar, and then another number. So because it's got that vertical bar in there, it's coming in as a character or string variable. And then when it separates it, those two numbers will also be string variables. Well, here we have an NA, vertical line, and then domain. And so that's treating that then as a string variable. And when we separate it, the NA is being treated as a string and the domain is treated as a, as a string. We can add an argument to separate to say convert equals true. And what that'll do is that once it's separated and created the new columns, it'll then convert the columns to whatever makes sense. So if it's a bunch of numbers, that column will go from being a character column to being a numerical. Um, and it will convert our string NA to the value NA. And so if we run this, what I'm betting is that our NA column now is red, okay? So again, we've talked about a few slick features with the separate uh, function. Um, again, we give it the column that we wanna separate, the names that we wanna separate it into, the key that we want to use to separate, uh, we can tell it to fill values to the right with NAs if there's not enough information. Um, the other thing that we saw was using convert equals true to convert the separated values into uh, whatever is the most logical, at least according to R. We've also seen how we can integrate this with pivot longer and pivot wider, along with a lot of the other dplyr functions that we've been using. So this is great. Um, let me... Go ahead and remove this line 67, bring up this write TSV, save my script. We'll then come back uh, over to our terminal and let me go ahead and open up Atom so I can modify my make file. So here in my make file, I had this data references genome ID taxonomy. It's gonna be RDP taxonomy. And this here all looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And to test everything, I can come back to my terminal and do make on that. And everything seems to be working well. It outputted. And if I do head data references, um, and this was called genome ID um, RDP taxonomy, if I look at the head, I now see that I've got my genome ID, the species, scientific name, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus. If I wanted to, I could have resorted things to put species at the end, but eh, who cares? Great, so this looks good. Um, something I did see in data references was the old version of this, which was genome ID taxonomy. I'm gonna go ahead and remove data references, uh, genome ID taxonomy. Uh, this is not being tracked by Git, remember, so I don't have to do anything special to remove it. And if I do get status, I see I changed two files, my make file and my get genome ID taxonomy. I'll do git add make file git um, and then code get uh, genome ID taxonomy dot r git commit dash m. And I will then say um, uh, separate out RDP taxonomy closes number 25 get checkout master, get merge um, issue 25. That all worked. And I will then um, 
redo my make uh, because again, when we merge branches, it changes the timestamp. So we can do make data references, RNDB, or not, um, genome ID. Okay. So this is the last test I wanna do to make sure this all works before I push the changes up. This all looks good. And now looking at GitHub, I see that this is closed. I'm gonna write a brief comment here, even though it closed the issue to say, uh, one lingering problem is that some of the records had more than one classification. We turned these into NA values, although we know that's not correct. We'll think about what to do. All right. And so I'll comment and we're good. So for the next episode, what we'll do is we'll take on how to parse out the NCBI taxonomy. The more I think about this problem that I just commented on, the more I think we're gonna wanna go back to the NCBI taxonomy and not use the RDP taxonomy. Again, the, the problem that we're running into is that um, because many genomes have many copies of the 16S gene, they're not all identical, they don't all classify to the same entity. Uh, when the taxonomy is for an organism, it's not for an actual sequence. The NCBI taxonomy is organismal, the RDP taxonomy, um, as being applied by the RNDB is actually um, for the each individual sequence. You might recall uh, that when we originally looked at the metadata file, there was a column for NCBI taxonomy, but it was full of NA values. There was nothing in there. So we'll have to go about doing this ourselves. And so this will allow us to see our good friend from the last episode, interjoin. Um, and then the opposite of separate, which we talked about today, which is unite, which allows you to bring columns together. So stay tuned for the next episode. Uh, to get word of when that happens, be sure that you like and subscribe this video. Um, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell icon so that you're notified when the next episode is released. I'd love to see how you're putting these commands into use. As we go further and further, you'll see that I'm kind of digging back from previous episodes to work with functions in the current episode and integrate them with other tools. That's really, uh, to me, the joy of programming is the ability to use all these different functions in different contexts and in different situations to solve problems. Um, so keep at it. Feel free to leave a comment below in the notes telling me what you're doing. If you have any questions or if anything's not clear, I'm happy to go back over this stuff. We will see things like separate, pivot longer, pivot wider as we go forward uh, in future episodes. So don't be afraid if, if this is all new to you and you're a bit confused. Stay with me, like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next time.